If Hillary Clinton prevails over Donald Trump, it'll be another milestone for women and a reminder of just how long the journey has been. The first election women could vote in was in 1920, when your great-grandmother was drinking Coca-Cola out of a glass bottle and riding around in a souped-up Ford. But it wasn't all fun. For suffragists, the struggle had been building for decades. Activists were routinely arrested starting in the 1870s, when advocates like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony defied the law to cast ballots. In 1913, a violent mob attacked a peaceful demonstration of suffragists in D.C., led by activist Alice Paul. The next year, Paul was arrested and staged a prison hunger strike, which got her sent to a sanitarium. A handful of states had agreed to allow women to vote by the early 1900s, but most adamantly opposed it. So activists stepped up their game. At the 1916 Democratic National Convention in St. Louis, they staged a dramatic 12-block-long demonstration dressed in all white, which may explain some of Hillary Clinton's fashion choices. The early suffragettes' hard work finally paid off when the 19th Amendment was ratified to allow women to vote just in time for Election Day 1920, the year Republican Warren Harding defeated Democrat James Cox. Stanton and Anthony didn't live to see their work pay off, but nearly a hundred years later, their legacy endures. So remember, while a woman's right to vote may seem basic here in the red, white, and blue, when you head to the polls, be sure to thank the women in white. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.